All right, what's up, guys? It's gonna be another invasion analysis. So I'm gonna be commenting on what I'm seeing, what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, all that stuff. Okay, so to start off, looking at this, I only see one guy. I'm thinking, okay, lone host, it's gonna be quick. Always like that. Always think it's gonna be quick, and it usually is when there's a, a lone host. He has murky right away. Some, it's something I noted, and I see him trying to summon uh, someone else. So right away, I'm thinking, okay, I have to make this faster because I don't want to be stuck in a two v one situation. And one of the first thing I notice against an opponent like this is. First of all, the latency is high, and second, this guy panic rolls and panic quick steps a lot. So I have to find this timing where I can roll catch the panic quick step and the panic roll. Although it's always easier said than done on high latency. Here I'm roll catching him, right there, the poison procs, and now the host is at one is at one or one away from dying. Because the poison is proc, so if I hit him once, his tear is gonna break. But he gets away safely. His uh, his teammate comes in clutch to save him. Unfortunately, though, the teammate is another red. So what that means for me, it reduces my chances of getting someone else on my side to help me fight against them. The other dude is using. Um, a superior version or a similar curve sword as I am as, as I'm using but the demon scar is a bit better also the also the fact that this guy is a pyro is a huge advantage for them because that means I cannot freely aggress the host I always have to manage the threat of the CBV And that's always an extra layer of difficulty. Any range option can prevent you from focusing on the other person. Which is why you always have someone against a mage or against the, the pyromancer when you invade. You always try to get that one guy that has a range option occupied. So here it becomes a lot harder because I'm trying to manage two players at the same time and like the host this friend here has high lap as well but at least I still have a chance because they're both pretty average if, if both of them were uh, similarly skilled as I as I am I don't think I would stand a chance much I'd have to run uh, a lot more but the host seems to be trying to, to go for uh, some of these random uh, parries. He can afford to get punished a lot because he has his friend to back him up. Here what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to go in and out with running attacks. Because they're always staying fairly close to each other. I can only go in and out quickly. I can't really stay there to get a roll catch chain going. Right now my objective is to try to proc poison on one of, uh, of one of those guys. So that I know that if I get a damage burst, the tier is already taken care of before I do the damage burst. I want to proc poison on either one of them. Getting some distance to uh, to cast the poison resin is actually a lot easier than it looks. Uh, you don't need that much distance to be safe. Nice uh, catch of the quick step there. You're going for um for a parry. I saw it because of the latency. It didn't quite uh, didn't quite land. Timing was just a bit off. 
And here this is my chance to take care of the host, but unfortunately I kind of switched to the wrong headpiece. I was supposed to switch to Torn Armor and uh, a little fumble there that maybe would, have, uh, would cost me the invasion here. So again, here the mistake was uh, on wake up, fumbling, going from the wrong change of headpiece to get the finish on the host, who was not poisoned yet. If the host was poisoned before me getting the burst damage, that would have been it right there. But you don't always get to decide when you get an opening for some heavy damage. So you might as well take it anyway. But we still did not play according to plan here, which it, which was to first poison one of them and then get the burst damage. Although so far I'm pretty confident because we are uh, heavily outplaying both of these guys. Here, unfortunately, though, this is where the uh, my luck runs out. Get backstab, uh, get gank backstab. While I attack one, the other one goes for the backstab, and then the wake up is pretty instant and uh, ruthless. So this is how it ends. So unfortunate there. I had my chance of winning, didn't take it, didn't really follow the game plan either, which was to poison, then go for the finisher. But lucky me. I get them again and this time the teammate is not a red so I am able to get some some uh, some help on my side and long and behold it, it is actually someone decent so big change here Change my strategy a bit, I go for a faster poison proc, so I'm using the Gru Dagger Poison Infused. I poison this guy right away. I know he has poison and now I know I can go on the offensive. He heals the poison but that's fine, we're gonna go straight back to our main objective. Which is to poison him. Or poison one of them at least. Here I'm doing very little damage. My teammate here is kind of leaving me. Uh, I don't know where he is uh, at this point in the invasion. So we're pretty much in the same situation as the last one. Where they're, they're both on me and I have to manage both players. And then it gets even worse because they get a blue. But unlike the last one, I'm trying to stay true to my game plan, which is the poison, then get the uh, burst damage. Although the blue here changes the the dynamic of this invasion. Finally, my teammate shows up, though. So what it means is that one of us is going to have a 2v1 and the other is going to have a 1v1. My teammate is the one who ends up having a 1v1. Here though I recognize that the blue does not have tier. So the blue not having tier kind of makes the poison useless which is why I decide to switch to the murky. But the whole, the whole point of poisoning my enemy before getting the burst damage is to have the tier already taken care of because you don't want we don't want the same thing to happen as last invasion where i broke tier get the host into a uh, uh a dangerous position and he still can escape because he still has his tier on that's why we're poisoning although it is not the case for this blue right there so with this blue we're trying to go for a bit of damage and then go for the big burst damage but we don't have to worry about the poison because he doesn't have tier. So seemingly I'm trying to focus on the blue more because I believe he is the weak link and that if I get him separate for just a little bit, he should be the easiest one to kill. 
Oh, seems to be on summon lag right now. Actually, completely desynced. I'm trying to use the trees as much as I can to separate the line of sight between the players so that I have a moment where the opponent does not know exactly where, where I am and I can use this to separate them a lot more uh, effectively. But again, the, they recognize that I'm the main threat, so they always keep two two players on me. They don't uh, they don't leave me that one v one. At least they have not yet. And here the blue gets slightly alone. We take the BS. Not alone for long though. Both players converge on me. He managed to get just the one bit of damage in, but my teammate can't finish him off, even though the blue rolls right on him. And then we get an extra teammate, so it's, it's starting to get a lot more even. Now we're, I'm guaranteed to get a 1v1 here. Actually, it's a 2v1 for us. They're 2v1ing that other red, and both of us are on that blue. Unless they stick to it, to each other, uh, we're bound to have our, our 1v1. The host is the one to, uh, that happens to be alone with me. It goes into uh, heavy water or deep water. Sometimes they, when you have a lack of skill, you try to go for whatever gimmick is available to you. Try to survive more, more easily. Although this Phantom is doing a good job at always going on me. The f this right there is the 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 most important hit there the red uh, hits both of them he, the red takes care of doing the burst damage so i go for the finisher and now that his phantom is dead it's uh it's pretty much a reverse uh, reverse situation what we had in the beginning happens in reverse now. The watchdog also gets the um, the other blue. Although unfortunately, uh, the red doesn't seem very smart. It seems like he's trying to attack uh, both me and the other watchdog. So, but it won't change anything. Here the host is proc for poison. So the tier is taken care of. As soon as we break his tier, it is over. And that is the situation where I wanted to be in from the beginning. We put pressure on him, so when he has distance, he has a choice between healing and healing his poison. And usually they'll pick healing. And then I go for my verse damage to finish him off, and there you go. 